to the connecting point. I am Dr. Marcy, your facilitator for this discussion today. And this is the place where creators connect to inspire, share their ideas and stories, to transform the world through raw and unedited talk. Now today, audience, I am here with a dear heart, a friend of mine, and, and, and has been for some time, Dr. Jennifer Wilkes. Hey, Jennifer. Hey, hey Ms. Marcy. <laughs> <laughs> And Jennifer knows I have to tell the connecting point before we get into this discussion because I'm going to let her tell you a little bit about who she is. I won't do it. But this person here, um, the connecting point. Oh, my gosh. Jennifer Marla, was she four? Yeah. So now, how many years is that? that we've Ooh, been 11. 11. Okay, y'all. The connecting point here is I met you before... Yeah, yeah. Even before, yeah. Uh -huh. So it uh -huh. must have been about 12 or 13 years. Yeah. Yeah, maybe a little bit, maybe about the same time. Okay. Well, anyway, audience, um, the connecting point here is I met this person. Jennifer, how did I meet you, though? I'm trying to. Uh, that was at the music store. I was working That's for what, okay. uh, artist I, development. I, mm -hmm. Okay. I was going into this um, music store to request, I think, the building for the set, for, uh, um, uh, what you call it? Um, I think it was for Jamari. So a listening party, yeah. Yeah, listening party. Listening mm -hmm. party, listening party. I went in there to uh, ask the gentleman who um, owned the, the store, could I do a listening party there? And of course, he said yes, and then Jennifer was working there, and so it was just, it just all connected. Yes, yep. the connected point. There was a connected point. And from there, uh, Jennifer brought her daughter to have piano and voice from me. Miss Marley, which you probably have seen on this platform <laughs> as well, Marley uh, Taylor. And so we just been, you know, it, we just been dealing with each other ever since, you know. Yep. It's just, you know, we, we're family. Yep, stuck like glue. Stuck <laughs> at this like point, glue. At this point, we're family. That's it. That's the connected yep. point. Yeah. <laughs> okay, Jennifer, can you tell the audience a little bit about who you are, where you grew up, and where you are now? Sure, sure, sure. Um, hello, I'm Dr. Jennifer Wilkes. I am from Florence, South Carolina, originally. Uh, I moved to Atlanta um, in 2010, I think it was, yeah, 2010. And um, before moving to Atlanta, I was working for a state senator in South Carolina. I was on the radio. I was an on-air personality. Um, and I still just felt like it wasn't the place for me being there. And um, my dad had just gotten sick and, and he was going through his issues, the beginning of his issues. And it was kind of weird for me to, to leave at that time. But my parents were very confident in me and, and they told me, don't worry about it. Everything's going to be OK. And that if it, if it was meant for me to go, to go ahead and go. Mm -hmm. So I had their full support and I moved. And um I've been here ever since, and since I've been here, it's just been on the up and up. It was the best decision I've ever made because um, Marley was able to get the development that she needed to 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 get into acting, and um, I was able to make the connections with you and others by moving. And so, it that's one decision I would never regret. Well, and, let, you know, since so you're talking about that, I'm I'm just gonna go on with that. Okay. About how how did you even know? for certain mm -hmm. that you had to go. It, you know, it kind of sounds like, you know, in the Bible it said, when God told Abraham, just go. Mm -hmm. Go to a place and I'll show you. Abraham That's, had no yeah. idea. He just obeyed. Mm -hmm. so the, it, what yeah. was it that really made you just say, you know what, I'm going? Yeah, yeah. Well, I had, when I was in college, I came to Atlanta to try out for um, a show that they had. It was, uh, I forgot the name of the show, but I came, my friend, uh, she rode with me and we slept on the street in the line with everybody else waiting to get in for <laughs> auditions. <laughs> and it was for a hosting position. So that was one of my, um, my, I guess, first memories of coming to actually do something. I had been here before, but to actually do something. And I think that's what kind of gave me like a little bug to like really get into 
just being here in the midst of entertainment, of Black excellence and all of that. Mm. Yeah. And then uh, my friend first moved here. She and I used to do um, background singing gigs for different artists mm -hmm. in South Carolina. And so she moved here first. I came to visit her. And then when I came to visit her for a while, that was it for me. She was like, <laughs> I can help you get a job. I can... And she connected me with Q. Q gave me a job on the spot. And it was like, I'm gone. As long as it, I got a that, job. You know what? The, everything was laid out. So you it couldn't really was. deny it. It really was. You know, Q, uh, Quentin, they call him Q. You mm -hmm. know, he needed organization with his business. And that's what I was going to school for. That's what I had been working with mm -hmm. the state senator with. And so when he knew my background, you know, pay was right. And he was like, yep, come on. I was like, I'm gone. <laughs> and I, since we're talking about Q, I want to shout him out too, because yeah. at the time when, when I met you, he donated, it was an in-kind donation to help me. I was, I was just really getting to start in 2010 is when I started Integrative Arts Creations. Wow, everything was around 2010. Yeah, but now we're rolling up on another one, one of those mm -hmm. plateaus. You know that, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it was it was 2010, and my son was in music, had this uh, group going, and I walked in. Q didn't know me. No. From Adam. I, I just told him what I needed, and he said, "Come, you can come on in here. I was like, what? You going to give us... Gave us the run of the whole building. Am I correct, Jennifer? Yeah, yeah. He's the like The whole that. building yeah. didn't ask for any money or mm -hmm. anything. And I, I want to shout him. I say his real name all the way yeah. through. <laughs> <laughs> Quentin Roberson. Quentin Roberson. I want to shout him out because yep. so often in, in, in the African-American community, we don't help each other. Yeah. We want to look for uh, money. Unless you give me money, I can't help you. Mm -hmm. But he saw the vision. He even was there. He came yeah. to the listening party. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. He he's he's a he's a very special person. The people that he's connected me with and connected other people to. I mean, his his impact has just gone on beyond him. Mm -hmm. You know, people. His wife and I are best friends. You know, we're close closer than mm -hmm. I was with him. You know, mm -hmm. and. Um, it's just people still reach out to me today. Like, you know, he's like my brother. So people at that time, they thought we were brother and sister. So they're like, you know, your brother this. And are y'all still doing this? And people still reach out to us for CDs and making. Yeah, Quentin oh, Lord, Quint, 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 I still have some of Quentin's CDs. That's what <laughs> y'all. <laughs> That's before Spotify. And right, 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 right. Quentin was making, yeah. you could go to Quentin and get all the black CD. He had yeah, red I still yeah. have some in my car. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> me too, me too. But he was doing printing for like independent artists. He gave them that space to come and develop Ooh, without having to worry about things. And you know, if he could do it, he he would. It, it was never a question of of if. It's like it, if he could do it, he would, and he would he work would. to figure out a way. You know. Yeah, and yeah. I just wanna I wanna shout that out because oftentimes we overlook our destiny helpers. Mm -hmm. God places people to move you along in your destiny sometimes we don't recognize it oh yeah because oh, you yeah. think oh well anybody do that no anybody won't no yep. so i just q i want to shout you out q. yeah q <laughs> <laughs> that's my yes. role we're, we're still working together we work together in so many different capacities we're still working together in a different capacity now it's just crazy to see how your relationships evolve over time yeah yeah <laughs> Yeah. But th those people who are supposed to be connected to you, mm -hmm. they know the calling that's on your life. You respect yeah. each other and you help each other out. Mm -hmm. You yeah. know, that's how you know the person you're supposed to be connected to. Because exactly. You're you're um you're growing each other. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. Very true. Now, mm -hmm. Jennifer, I know audience, I know her family. And so her family is very, very, very supportive. Her mm -hmm. mom, dad, our sisters, all of them. So leaving South Carolina couldn't have been an easy choice. <laughs> That's why I pointed it out because she was a 
she was at home with mommy. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. you, you were in a place where you had all this support. Yeah. You know? And you just up and say, you know what? I am supposed to be somewhere else. Mm -hmm. Yep. So there's this passion in you that you just knew you had to go. Yeah. Yeah. So what are some what's some of the first things you encountered here? Because I want the audience to see how it's evolved over the years. That's why I'm doing yeah. it. Yeah. Um, ooh, it was a lot of different things, especially working with you. You, I was in all types of places. Place. Yeah. And, and I had the, bringing him back up. That's another thing with him is he was involved in all types of business and entertainment industry, music, art. I mean, even the, he was, the strip clubs. I mean, he was helping people, helping, you know, promoting. And again, still helping people any way he could. So I found myself in sometimes a warehouse, this distribution, strip club, all different types of places, which was at that time was good for me because um, I was able to still network mm -hmm. and even seeing people then and seeing them now, how their lives have changed. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, just experiencing, I would say coming here, I experienced all sides of Atlanta. The roughest to the best parts. We were sometimes in mansions and sometimes we were in the hood recording studios. <laughs> um, so it was it was good for me at that time just to experience it all. I was young, younger. And um, Marley was my only child. She was younger. And like you said, my parents were and my sisters were at home, but it was no question for them to help me in any way I needed. You know, mm -hmm. so when I first moved, Marley stayed with my my parents for some months until I found my own place. Mm -hmm. And it took me about three months. I was here and with my friend for three months and I told her I wasn't gonna be with her long. I was gonna find me a place. And not that she minded, but I don't like staying in people's spaces too long, even mm -hmm. if we are good, you know. And um, so three months, I found my own spot. Marley came and um, my brother, he was here in Atlanta for college. He went to Morehouse. Mm -hmm. And uh, he uh, was also a, a musician in the entertainment business. And he actually was Usher's first drummer when Usher started. I didn't know that. Yeah, Usher's wow. first drummer. Mm -hmm. And um, the guy who connected him with Usher, AJ Alexander, he is also another, he's another Q, responsible for so many people in the industry. He helped discover Usher and developed him. Mm -hmm. And um, he's still one of Usher's right-hand men, men today. But... Uh, I met up with him just to take some headshots of Marley because he does photography too. Mm -hmm. and so he's like a family friend. And I said, hey, you know, I think Marley really has something here, but I want to get her some, some photos made. And he came and he did her headshots at my apartment. And right then and there, he was like, nope, she's got it. He made a phone call to a, a, um, a manager in the business who connected us with an agency. And from there, it was, it just went it was on. a done deal. You know, it was a done deal. Yeah, for, for Marley, that was it. And so I said, okay, that's one reason why I needed to be here. You needed to be here, yeah. Mm -hmm. Because her, her um, like you said, her training yeah. uh, was tied to that. I, when you were talking, I still see Marley sitting at this kitchen table <laughs> making up a monologue. I, I talk about that all the time. Marley would come over here, and one night we were having dinner. And I don't know where she started making up this monologue. I think she was four then. This is my lot about hot sauce. I said, girl, what are you talking about? <laughs> oh, my goodness. But she would do things like that. And I said, you yeah. know what? This child here. Yeah. Yeah. She had no problem. Special. Yeah. She had no problem turning it on when it was time. Yeah. None at all. Yeah. Yeah. And even now, she's in that teenager stage, you know, where they kind of find little insecurities about themselves. Yeah. They kind of pull back, but she's, she's still her when it's something she knows she can do and she's confident. She goes after it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, especially with acting and everything. She's, yeah. still, she's still in there. So, yeah. Well, honey, yeah. That's, that's another reason. Your, your journey here was for Marley, but it was also for you. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yeah. And we're going to talk about that because <laughs> I remember... I'm just telling you things I remember. I okay, don't even know how you were, Jennifer. <laughs> but you would bring Marley over here. and Well, we started at, at Victoria's Kids Academy. You would bring her there for mm -hmm. um, piano lessons. And I just remember seeing you and thinking, she is such a good mom. Oh. I don't know how old you were then, Jennifer. How old were you? Cry. 
about 25. Mm. Maybe yeah, 24, 25, yeah. 24, 25. And I said, she's such a good mama. Uh -huh. and, and then when I left there and came to my house, you brought Marley here. Then it got to be where Marley was come spend the night. And I <laughs> said, <laughs> but I always remember you and you always listen, you know, attentively. Mm -hmm. And um, then you went on and you went back to school. Mm-hmm. What yeah. made you do that? Yeah. What made you say, you know what? I've been here and I, there's some things I'm going to need. Mm -hmm. Well, actually, before I left South Carolina, I had already started my master's. Mm -hmm. I started right after, after college, after uh, my undergrad. But it took me a minute to finish. I had to take some breaks mm -hmm. in between. So it took me maybe about what would have taken me two years took me like four to finish mm -hmm. my master's. Um, and... I just knew, number one, with my master's, I wouldn't try to hurry up and go ahead and finish because I was still working with Q. Mm -hmm. And I knew that it would help his business too and it would help us further along because we were looking at like reality show um, opportunities at that point mm -hmm. before things closed down. And mm -hmm. so I really wanted to be in a position to consult him as best I could knowing that, you know, I was a part of his, his inner circle. Mm -hmm. I said I wanted to be, was well-versed in what I needed to be with communication and business. And so at, at that point, that was more so for the business, but I knew it would help me, of course, personally, if, mm -hmm. if anything. I always, I'm always thinking about, they say don't have a backup, but I'm always thinking about what can help yeah. me now in as a backup. Mm -hmm. <laughs> always. Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> I don't know if it's the single mom thing, but it's like. I don't know, Jennifer, but I listen. I'm with you on that. <laughs> you need to have something else going on oh. now. <laughs> always, always. Even if, like I said, it's, it has it can be related, but it's still going to be something to help support you if something else doesn't work out. Mm -hmm. So I said, you know, regardless, I'm in Atlanta, you know, and and if things don't work out here, then it's going to help me further along. And um, I started at um, Chick Fil A headquarters mm -hmm. when um, when the business closed with Q, mm -hmm. and I was there as I uh, started off ten dollars an hour. It went up, but I started. <laughs> and my dad talked me into taking that because he was like, you know, it's going to lead to better things and Chick-fil-A is a good company. And I'm he like, was okay. right, wasn't he? Say again? I said he was right, wasn't he? he yes, he was right because Chick-fil-A held me down for a good minute. They mm. did until they didn't. I was <laughs> right there. They didn't. <laughs> I'm going to just leave it right there. But while I was... <laughs> But um, it did work out. I have made some great connections there because, again, there's always a reason always a why reason. you place, place different places. And so I have met some great friends there I'm still in connection with. We're like family. And um, I had Sir in 2016. And the blessing there was at that time I was able to work from home. Mm -hmm. So I was pregnant with Sir and I was able to work from home. Um, I gave birth to him at home. And I was able to still work without missing out on any money, <laughs> which was a blessing. And um, and I he was about six months. And let me let me rewind because I was yeah, because you're leaving out. You wrote a book in between there. If I'm not yeah, let me, let me yeah, you I wrote a book before, about that before uh, Sir was born. I forgot about that. Yeah. You just said that. Um. So yeah, let me back up. <laughs> I, <laughs> I, I was on social media one day. I don't even know how I met the publisher. Her name is Saba. And uh, I don't know how I even met her, but she reached out to me and she asked me that I want to be a part of a, a, a collaboration with a book with other women. Mm -hmm. She thought I'd be a great fit for it. And um, I looked it up and she gave me the information. I said, sure. I love the concept. So it's called 20 Beautiful Women. It is basically a collection of 20 women of us sharing our stories of and our journeys of trauma and lessons learned and helping others heal through our experiences, mm -hmm. which is great because you just get to see the difference, the different experiences that women go through mm -hmm. and we're all different ages. And so I just love it how it's a firsthand perspective of just different things that we experience and how we, we heal from them and cope with them. Mm -hmm. And um, I love the concept. I was part of the first volume. And so the first volume was almost, was about to come out and I was reading the proof 
and I noticed some errors. And so I reached out to her and I said, you know, I don't want to step on anyone's toes. And I think you have an editor and a proofreader, but there are a lot of errors in here. And this is like my specialty. And I want to make sure it represents us very well. And long story short, I became the editor and the proofreader for all the other volumes after that. I mean, I stuck with her to, to the end. And so there are probably like maybe five volumes, mm -hmm. I think, even an African, Africa volume. Mm -hmm. And uh, we still work together as well. She's still a great friend. And um, I hadn't even met her at that point. I probably met Saba maybe like three years into our working relationship. Mm -hmm. It was all just over the phone, email. But uh, she's, she's awesome. And um, it, again, it just shows how women of color, how we can work together. We yes, can be can. professional. You know, and she now she's a great friend. And so I'm grateful for that opportunity because it helped me a lot as well. And I was pregnant with Sir editing and proofing for her too. So I was tired. <laughs> I was tired. Tired. Yeah, I was really tired with him and older. So yeah. I yeah, I, listen, I remember. <laughs> oh, oh my goodness. <laughs> uh. But yeah, I forgot about that. So that was one. And then she helped me um, publish an ebook called Five Ways to Conquer Chaos. It's basically just a short, quick book that I probably need to read again now for myself um, <laughs> with how to just cope with day-to-day -day chaos in your life and things that aren't going the way you expect them to, just some tips of how you can work through your day. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And uh, she helped me, helped me publish that. And all th those books all became um, Amazon bestsellers. Mm -hmm. So I'm ha happy about that. And people are still asking for the books now. And I think I have some here somewhere. Yeah, if oh, you yeah, do, you right need here. to show, it, show us some, Jennifer, so they'll know what it looks like. Here we like. go. Yes, I have, I have that show. one. Yeah, Ooh. this is the first I, one. I was at the book signing for that I one. know, <laughs> yeah. I know, yep. 20 Beautiful Women, yep. And so I'm excited about that. And that's something that I always tell Marley, do you want to do things that, that can represent you when you're no longer physically? Yes, there? yes. And that and you represents know, Jennifer, you directly. I just had that thought the other day um, mm -hmm. with the book I wrote. You know, sometimes we write them, but they're for a different time and season. Mm -hmm. And and recently, God said, it, "This is the season now." Yeah, I'm like, uh, okay. And it, the thought came to me: what you have put in that book lives forever. Mm -hmm. It lives yep. forever. And yeah. I thought, like, you know, when you're writing, you're, you're not really thinking that you're just getting you out the information. But yeah. that is the truth. Yeah. But yeah. there is written mm -hmm. and it's it's not going away. Yeah. Yeah. It lives yeah. forever. Yeah. So think yeah. about that. Those people who want to write and uh, mm -hmm. authors, whatever it is, if it's poetry, it, mm -hmm. and it doesn't have to be a big, thick book. I learned yeah. that too. Yeah, God exactly. just get it out. Yep. And it doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't, doesn't have to be perfect because Lord mm -hmm. knows mine was not. I had to go back and do, I did self-editing. Yeah. And then yeah. I was, I sent it to my aunt who was, you know, and I let her look through it. So, um, yeah. because self-publishing costs money, y'all. Mm -hmm. Oh, Lord have mercy. Right, right. <laughs> yeah. You're right about that. <laughs> so I had, I said, listen, I got to do my own editing here. Yeah. I called a family member to, to do the book cover. So, um, but if you're interested in writing, do it. Just do it. Mm -hmm. One thing about it, it will last forever. Your children, your grandchildren can say, you know, yep. they wrote yeah. a book. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They yeah. wrote a book. Yeah. So yeah. Um, yeah. from there, though, Jennifer, you didn't stop there. No. You went on to pursue a doctorate degree. Yeah, yeah, and the Blood, decision. Blood, sweat, and tears. <laughs> Who are you telling? Oh my Blood, goodness! And, and audience, know. I want to say this: she's a single mom at the same time doing a doctorate degree, working a job, also <laughs> entrepreneur. Also, a daughter who is an actress, <laughs> and sometimes have to travel with her. So, listen, mm -hmm. I, I just want to put all this out there for the people that have excuses, because you don't have an excuse. That's it. <laughs> you don't have an excuse. Yeah, yeah. But that's it. Come on, Jennifer. You. you <laughs> 
And look, God, God knew when I needed to do it because he knew once I hit my 30s and mid-30s, I was I'm tired. <laughs> yeah, he knows so, when. Yeah, of course. Yeah, because I thought energy. the same thing. I said, if I had to get that again, I, I wouldn't do it. Yeah. If I energy. had to do it right now. Mm -hmm. Oh no. Oh no. Yeah, the energy, yeah, because um it was a, there were a lot of late nights. And, oh my God. you know, I knew if anyone could relate, you could relate. And, you know, sometimes I would talk to you and tell you my experience. And I knew you understood. Everybody doesn't understand that journey. No. They, they don't. They don't. Mm -mm. Um, but yet the, the decision to do that was really interesting. So I had Sir in January 2016. And my best friend's husband, he passed away in March, a day after his birthday. Mm -hmm. and he grew up like a brother to me he was one of my my best male friends and um he died he was 33 and they had three children she had just had she had just had her son like six months before I had sir and so the last time I saw him was when um they came here he was doing a workshop for work and they came here and I went to visit them and he saw me pregnant and you know and um he died that March we usually always celebrate our birthday together mm -hmm. and um, when he passed away it took me in a really deep depression I was already kind of depressed after having Sir just because my situation wasn't where I wanted it to, wanted be, fully, to be. be fully you know um uh, thankfully got uh Sir was a awesome child you know yeah. he, was, he was so easy he's easy now you know mm -hmm. I'm, I'm very grateful he's he's such a smooth child you know, um, and six months after he was born that summer, that's when I said, I'm going to go for my doctorate. And I was like, this is the craziest decision. He's <laughs> six months. I just left Chick-fil-A because the new, the new supervisor, I'm just, the new supervisor didn't want me to work from home, but I had to breastfeed Sarah because he wouldn't take a bottle. Mm hmm and so I just made a decision to just chuck the deuces to Chick-fil-A. And Marley was getting ready to do her premiere in California. So all of that was happening at the same time because the movie was coming out that November. And um, it, was, it was a lot. But I pushed through. My mom came and helped me as much as she could. Um, sometimes I would be writing papers late at night on the computer. And she would have Sir in the room with her while I'm doing my work. And he would get up and cry. She would bring him to me. I would breastfeed, still typing the paper. You know, he'd fall asleep. I'd give him back to her. Then I have to get up at 8 o'clock in the morning to be to teach because I did. I started teaching at a school mm -hmm. to teach at a college. And so it was just nonstop, nonstop. And now I'm like, I don't want to stay up past 11, 10, 11 o'clock. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, but see, this is... I, I'm glad you're going through this because it's going to encourage somebody um, yeah. because we have a lot of single black women. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, yeah. Young, old. Mm -hmm. And like, like you, I've been single for some yeah. time and mm -hmm. having two children who are also creative yeah. <laughs> children and you want yeah. them to be in things. You don't want them to um, be denied of any kind of mm -hmm. experiences that can better them. You know, I, I'll never forget. I heard a parent say some years ago and I, it just, I, I just couldn't believe it. it took me back. She said, Oh, uh, -uh I don't want my child in anything. Cause I'm not doing all that. And I thought, what? Yeah. I've heard it too. I, I said, I've heard it too. I looked at, I could not believe, I said, I, what parent mm -hmm. says that? I know I've heard uh -huh. it too. Y'all, let me tell you something. I remember, and Jennifer probably had to do the same thing. My car is where my books were. Mm -hmm. I would take my children to, to their practices some way across town. I would sit in the car and do my reading uh, while I was working on my degree. And, and mm -hmm. it was, you wouldn't get home and settle to late. Mm -hmm. And then have to get up, go to work, come home, yep. make sure people, the children eat, and do it yep. over again. Do it again. 
Yep. It did not it, stop. It was automatic. The only day I had off, I think, was on Sunday. So, yep, I was about to say maybe Sunday. Yep, that it was, was it. it was, he was on autopilot. You know, I forgot Marley was doing uh, ballroom dancing too. Yeah. So when I was pregnant with Sarah, she was doing ballroom dancing, and then she started filming almost Christmas. So I was working while she was in practices. I was working on set, pregnant, and I mean, it'd be sometimes I'd be on set on my computer watching her film, and it was just it was autopilot, you know. But I knew it was it was in her. I saw it in Marley early on before I left South Carolina. Mm -hmm. I saw it in her. And she told me she wanted to do it when I asked her. I'm like, you know, you, this looks like it'd be something good for you. I, I, I see it in you naturally, you know. And she just took to it like she the pro that she was a pro. Young, yeah, she, you know. Yeah. Like yeah, I and, said, I saw it at, when you brought it at four <laughs> years old. She was that way. Yeah. I mean, yeah. She, she has, you teach her a song. She just... Mm -hmm. I just used to tell her to go on in the kitchen, uh, Marley, and um, <laughs> I pretend the kitchen is the stage. I did, because she and, clearly I was giving her voice lessons, but I, I had mm -hmm. to go into uh, musical theater with Marley yeah. in the house because she um, would act the songs out. Mm -hmm. Yep, and you, knew, you, saw, you saw it in her, and you knew how to bring it out of her in a way that was conducive to how she needed it, you know, taught to her, which is why I wanted her sticking with you, because I might know... Miss Marcy gets it. She she gets it, you know. And and I will rearrange my entire schedule for for my kids to do to do something that they Yeah, me do. too. Me too. Uh Jennifer, There's no question. I that's what you call sacrifice mm -hmm. and that's love. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I've sacrificed 9 to 5s because yeah. you know people want that stability and I'm like, you know, I need something that has some flexibility. Yeah. And I I will go into interviews telling them, look, hey, my daughter's in acting. I need to be able to take her to auditions and be able to work remotely if something happens and I need to travel with her. And I would just be honest, you know, if they couldn't provide that, I would have to keep moving. Then you just you can't know? take the job. It wasn't, it wasn't for me. And that's that's what put the bug in me to become an entrepreneur, to have some flexibility, even though it was it's still tough, but it still gives you that more, more control over your life. And once you get that bug, you're like, I don't want anybody telling me what to do. <laughs> and, and, and I'm glad you mentioned the entrepreneurship. So after Jennifer got her doctorate, okay, she, mm -hmm. she got that. <laughs> that didn't stop. Two years, two and a half years. She got I it in two and a half years. years. She sure did. And after that, she said, you know what? I'm going to start this. I'm going to do this. She just started doing these things. Mm -hmm. And Jennifer, I know you can explain to the audience how being an entrepreneur is hard work, but the oh, yeah. work is hard but enjoyable. Oh, yeah. That's your passion. Mm -hmm. Yep. I always say if I'm going to work for myself or if I'm going to make money, I have to do something I love, even in working for someone else. It still has to be something I enjoy, you know, mm -hmm. teaching and, you know, working with Q with music. Those were things I enjoyed. And, um, but I promised myself I wasn't going to, I, I don't want to be a slave to my own mind or to anyone mm. else. Mm. That's Say my that motto. again. Say I, don't wanna, <laughs> I never want to be a slave to my mind or to anyone else. Mm -mm. I, so will anytime, mm -hmm, I will, I will not, not be. I will not be. There you go. And, and, and you know, I, yep. That's mm -hmm. what I say all the time. I even teach my children that if they come home, parents, yep. I'm, so, I'm sorry, but I'm not sorry. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. I am, I one spirit that I cannot deal with is oppressor. Please, yep. whatever you do, mm -hmm. I, I, I'm, I'm a kind-hearted person. Mm -hmm. I will work hard at what I do. There you go. You gotta oppress me now. Exactly. <laughs> yep. Exactly. And That's when it's time for control don't work on Mars. Yep. There, there you go. That's when it's time for me to go. I don't care. I'm like, I will figure it out. Yeah. I will figure it out. So yeah, that mm -hmm, I'm right there. And that's the thing with entrepreneurship. It's like, you know, I have the control of of being myself and 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 representing myself the way I want to be represented, represented. taking full ownership of how I'm presented into the world, you know um in any kind of way so with entrepreneurship the door is wide open yeah. i feel like that's an opportunity to show all of who i am so there's no one lane that i'm in but if i could put it all in under one it would just be 
um, Inner Fitness, which is a business that I'm getting ready to get started fully, Inner Fitness, because that covers the life coaching, that covers business coaching, that covers getting your body right, your mind right. Mm -hmm. And so, but everything I do kind of falls under that umbrella, but there are different things and different sectors that I go through with that. And it doesn't keep me boxed in. If I want right. to do music this today, I can do music. If you I want to do, do art, I can do art. <laughs> if I want to make waist beads, I'll make waist beads, you know? So I, I hate when people say, you know, you want to find one thing and stick with it. Oh, I'm no, gonna, that's I'm not great no. at many things. Yeah. You know, I'm great at many things. And I love that. That's one thing I love about myself because that's what's helped me to support my family, being able to be versatile. You and know. Jennifer, you know I'm, I'm getting ready to come with a scripture to back that up. For come, the on, come, that on. Beat one. <laughs> come on, come on. Come on with it. God said I am that I am. There and so go. that means he is all things to all people. And I'm there in his go. image. So listen. Oh, Lord. <laughs> Jennifer, no, you don't have it. <laughs> this is Sir's book. I just put this book on the bookshelf. Look at, look at that timing. Listen there. That means if I'm in his image... I can I can do many things now. Many. Not, don't box me in. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And the goal is to leave here empty. Don't right. leave this earth with some of that boxed in. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And I wanted my children to see me do that because mm -hmm. I saw my parents work really hard. I also saw them like dabble in things that they enjoyed, their hobbies. But I still saw that they both weren't completely fulfilled. You mm -hmm. know. If I could be completely honest, my dad should have been a great gospel artist mm -hmm. with my mom. You know, my mom is a great baker. She should have opened her own shop and things like that. And so growing up, I saw, I'm like, my parents are great. They should be branching out, mm -hmm. you know, and that, and still giving them their flowers because they, they've done a lot and they've been able to help, help me when necessary. Yeah. But I wanted my children to see that there's no limit. It's no limit. Ooh, no let limit. me say that again. There mm -hmm. is no limit. And you yeah. know, our parents grew up in an era where it's respectable to get a job, mm -hmm. take care of your family, work on a nine to five until mm -hmm. you can't work no more and enjoy yourself. Uh, I'm just, that's, that's really what it is. Yeah. And you yeah. know, we're looking at our parents now and saying, oh, they has, they got so much more in there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but it was during that era where, you know, that's what the going trend was. Mm -hmm. Get a job, do this, do that, take care of your family, and you're good. Yeah. But the thing is, when you get older and you don't have the energy now to do to the other things, <laughs> yeah. then that's where you, you don't move as you, you yeah. know would have. Mm -hmm. Now, when yeah. you're young, you should be exploring. Yeah. Oh my goodness. And parents, please let your children explore. Yes. That's how yes. they find out what they really want to do. Stop mm -hmm. putting what you want them to do on them. Right. Right. Yep. Yeah. Like like with Sir, you know, his dad was a child actor. Mm -hmm. And he sees Marley. And I know Sir has it in him, but you know, I was gonna sign him up for acting class with Marley recently. And um he got in there and he wasn't feeling it. And I said, you know, you sure you don't want to do it? And he said, not right now. He's not ready. And I said, right. and my mom was like, well, let me talk to him. And I said, no, he said, not right now. It doesn't mean That's he never right. may do He's... it. And if he doesn't, it's okay. But he said, not right now. And I'm going to respect that because I know what he wants to do. He's going to do it. He's going to do it. You know? That's right. Yeah. He knows so he wants to know. dance. He wants to take tap. And he wants yes, to he, Michael listen. Jackson. That boy. <laughs> Yeah, let him, let Sir dance. Yeah, let him yeah, dance. yeah, I know. Because it's coming from his soul, yeah. you know? It's coming from that place where you can't teach it. And, and yeah. so, you know, I respect that. He he tells you how he feels. And I'm like, okay, not right now. I, I can take that, you know? And so, yeah. you know, I'm hoping that whoever's watching, especially if you're a parent, mm -hmm. to allow children to touch that thing that they love to express themselves with. Mm -hmm. and let them be free like when, when Ma mahogany was tired of dance and she did it from four years old i know uh, you remember on a, and then finally she said i don't want it you yeah. think i was gonna say girl i spent all my money <laughs> da, 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 and i did spend money <laughs> right right because it costs but you know what i was okay with it mm -hmm. i said okay yeah what you gonna do next? Yeah, yeah. And let them roll with it. And yeah. through all of those different experiences of, 
And she tried many different things. She tried mm -hmm. piano. She mm -hmm. tried violin. She yep. tried the chorus. She tried miming. She mm -hmm. did dance. But the yeah. one that she gravitated to <sighs> is what she loves. And we I were mean. just talking about that recently. All those other, other things, they still were connected to art. Mm -hmm. And dance, right. you have form, okay? The, pro the, the process of thinking to do the art was embedded in those other things. Exactly. But and if I had not given her that opportunity to explore, mm -hmm. that would have stifled the growth of what she's doing yep. in art. Exactly. So here's, come the creative on, process. Yep, creative exactly. Process. Oh, Lord. Yeah, but just, I, <laughs> I, I mean, I'm big on letting people have creative freedom. Yeah. I, I'm just mm -hmm. having students to have creative freedom. And yeah. so freedom, period. Yeah. Stop yeah. oppressing people mm -hmm. now and stop oppressing our children. Let right. Them, let them be. Right. I'm, right. And living okay, vicariously through them. <laughs> I'm going to get out my soapbox. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I just was, because I mean, in the businesses, especially, you see a lot of parents who are pushing their kids because it's something that they want them to do. And the kid may not really be interested in, in acting or something like that. And I'm like, you, you know, you can't have them fake in the funk. It really got to be, you know, in them and you can't push them because it's something that you wish you had done and you need to go do it. Right. <laughs> you know? Right. Yeah. And you know, I'm going to say this before moving on, but I had an experience. I, it was a child at my house, high school kid and, um, his father was here with them and I I just paid attention to the child because I'm always watching them and he was on his phone the whole time and I, I said you like you like art don't you and he said his I mean his eyes like lit up I said what high school do you go to and he told mm -hmm. me I said you had the wrong one and I told his dad, I mm -hmm. said, send him to this high school that, mm -hmm. that compliments what he loves to do. Yep. And he said, well, you know, my mom want me to be a doctor. But that child, let me tell you what he did. He found me in another room and came in high school now, came in there and brought me. He said, look at what I, I drew. That tells you I... When I asked him what he liked to do, mm -hmm. he just opened up. Yeah. But his, it is thought I got to do what my mm -hmm. parents say. I'm gonna be a doctor, but I don't. I don't really. I don't really want to do that. Parents, yeah. listen to your children. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Early. Early. Mm -hmm. Pay attention. Pay attention to them early. A lot of them they early. don't. They don't see the gifts in them early. You know, I saw it in Marley early. I saw it in Sir early. And I'm like, okay, you know, I see how what what, what I can put in, in their path to kind of help them along. Yes. And, you know, but um, I think we don't do it early enough. You right. know, especially because the, the, the new age that we're going into is built on entrepreneurs, it's going to be built on entrepreneurship. Oh, yeah. yeah. And it's not always going to be funneling kids to college all the time. And we want to be able to prepare our children to have that choice. Right. You know. The choice of, hey, if you want to have your own business, I started early to get you going early. And if you want to go to college, you have that opportunity, too. But that's not right. just college being the only choice, you know. And, you know, that's um, my students will tell you, I'm always saying, what can you do now? What do you like to mm -hmm. do? Start your business now. I show yeah. you how to do it because our children, if you want, we want a better society, then we've got to allow them to make choices. Right. And stop mm -hmm. making them robots. They're right, not robots. Right. They're human beings. Mm -hmm. And they love to be creative too. We all do. We're mm -hmm. all creators. Yeah. Yep. Exactly. Exactly. And that leads to the next thing. You have created a program. Yeah. To get the body right. And I hadn't done yes. it yet. Oh, I mercy. <laughs> I'm scared. Y'all, I'm scared. I'm ready for you. <laughs> Look, Jennifer, I, I got to tell you, this is so funny. Mahogany and I said, uh uh, mom, we can't fool with Jennifer. She going to kill us. <laughs> I saw like Marley, but she doesn't have a choice. That's one thing she doesn't have a choice. <laughs> look, we saw Marley. We said, look at Marley. She don't want to be there. <laughs> I know it's, I know I it's good for it. 
<laughs> Jennifer, I said, oh, Jennifer not going to kill me. Look at her. I said, look at Jennifer. <laughs> Oh gosh, no, look at Marley. Said, look, we need to go get Marley. Marley. <laughs> look, if she ran away, I'd know exactly where she would come because you're going to feed her. You gonna... That's right. She's I gonna have that's right. I let Marley eat whatever she want off it. <laughs> I know she's going to be there, but no, it's not, it's not that bad. It's not that bad. Uh uh, you. Jennifer, I see it. I'm, I'm telling my you, mama I see, what in the world? Mama, you don't even give us time to get our body <laughs> ready for this. <laughs> but it's, I promise it's not that bad because I tell everyone, go at your own pace, even though, of course, I have to show the high intensity of it. So you kind of know what to expect from me as a coach. But um, I want you to go at your own pace. I don't want you to hurt yourself and pull anything. And, you know, so I do. I also coach you through proper form. Um, but the, the program, the new class is called Work Hit. Um, it's a high, what we hit is high intensity interval training. So the, the idea of it is that you work hard in an exercise for a certain amount of time and then you take a short break and then you work for a certain amount of time and you take a short break. And so what that does is it, it lets your body, it kind of tricks your body into still burning calories after you were finished working out. Mm. So after you finish working out, your, your body is still working. And I found that to be the best for me and my clients I work with. It gets your results quicker, makes you stronger, and it builds endurance over time. Um, and so instead of just doing just cardio, I mean, that, that helps for a little while, but it's not going to get you to most of your goals, you mm -hmm. know. And, um, and then people are intimidated by weightlifting, especially mm -hmm. women, you know. And so it's a way to kind of bridge the two, Tony and strengthening all in the same program. And um, I came up with that after I finished my training certification. I said I wasn't going back to school, but I did <laughs> during the pandemic. Yes, you did. I did. <laughs> during the pandemic, um, that's when I kind of found my love. I had always been in, in shape in a sense, but I found my love for fitness during the pandemic and kind of got my friends going at home and mm -hmm. working out online because I just didn't want to just keep gaining weight during the pandemic. Mm -hmm. And then I said, well, you know what? I'm going to just go ahead and get my, my certification. And, um, and so that's when I said, let me take it seriously. And really people were asking me if I was a trainer and I'm like, no. And so when I kept getting that question, yeah, exactly. And when you told me, just go ahead and do it. I'm like, okay, I'm going to do it. And I had a friend who was yeah, a trainer. I saw he was like, Jennifer, I saw it that day. I think I texted you. You did. Said, Jennifer, do you have... And it all, I mean, I said, just as vivid. I said, I got to text Jennifer this now because <laughs> she's supposed to yep. be doing something online. Yes. That, I think that's what it was. Yeah, I was, I was, I think I was working out online and you mm -hmm. text me after that. Yeah. And my friend, he's, he's actually an actor in California. I grew up with him. Crazy story, just a sidetrack. He's on a show called The Upshaws on Netflix. Uh huh. I've seen yeah. that. Yeah. He's, he's Mike Epps. Uh, he's there. His, his son, he's the one who's like the UPS um, driver. Uh -huh, uh -huh. And um, yeah, he's my childhood friend. And it's crazy because Marley tried out for the part to be his sister and she was second up for that part. They would have been on the show together. Crazy. It's crazy. Yep. But he also is a fitness trainer. And so I was working mm -hmm. out with him online. And that's when he told me, he was like, you already a trainer. Just go ahead and get certified. And, you know, and so he, he encouraged there. me also. Yeah. And um, so I was doing, I do a lot of online coaching, sometimes in, in the gym, one-on-one -on -one coaching, but I got the opportunity because this is how things come, come full circle. When I first moved to Atlanta, Marley and I used to go to yoga in uh, the West End. Mm -hmm. And our yoga guru there, his girlfriend at the time, we connected with her really well. And she started dance yoga. I helped her start her first dance yoga business, like maybe eight years ago. And it evolved into twerk fitness. Mm -hmm. And so she travels all over the country holding classes. And she finally opened her own studio uh, in Mableton uh, off of Veterans Memorial. Mm -hmm. And she was looking for fitness instructors. And so I would go to her twerk classes with my friends. And then she asked me, she said, Could, would you teach a class, like a boot camp class? And I was like, sure. That's what I really wanted to do because I wanted to get more people like in person in the mm -hmm. community. And so that's where that started work hit and wow. she's given me the opportunity to come into her studio and 
and every week and, and have class, which I'm grateful for. And it's it's um it's leading me to my ultimate goal, which is to open up my own gym. So that's that's mm-hmm. my goal for this year. Look at all these in. connecting points. I love I it. Know. Yeah. Audience, you see that you you connect with people. People help get you there. Yeah. Yeah. People help get you there. Tenacity, perseverance mm-hmm. helps get you there. Yeah. Because I'm yeah. telling you, I wanted Jennifer to tell this whole thing <laughs> so that you would see you have no excuse. There, there really isn't. And even if you, if something comes up and, and you think it's an excuse, it's not. You have I have no to excuse. talk myself. Yeah. I have to talk to myself all the time. Like, girl, stop. Yeah. yeah. I find, find a way. Do. Yep. Yeah. And uh, I find a way, dig deep, find a way, you know, making sure you're taking care of your body, get your energy right. Jump, jump back in, jump back in. Yeah. And Jennifer also has health products. Um, yeah. That you can purchase as well from her. Mm-hmm. And so she is the health coach. <laughs> Boom. Health yeah, coach. Yeah. Who yeah. would have thought from where you were? I know. But you had to go that pathway to mm-hmm. learn business things. Yeah. Yep. Different types of business. It, it really helped me to learn different types of businesses, different um, structures of business, um, what worked in one area, what didn't work in one area. So it was good for me to see a lot of things fail or, you know, or not work at that time because it, it taught me lessons for my business, you know, mm-hmm. and, and businesses. And, you know, it's not to say that I'm not going back to those things because I still... I have opportunities to get in the studio with music and that's something that's still a passion of mine too. Yeah. So I just know what seasons are for what. what? That's right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, so the, the coaching and health and all of that, it's, it's about physical, it's about the mental, you know, helping people sort out their life. Uh, I can see that their physical restrictions were working out is because of some type of spiritual or mental block. issue. Mm-hmm. You know, and so I'm not just that trainer, like, let's come on, let's work out. Let's, no, I, I want to know the whole person. The whole going. person. Yeah, yeah. 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 Well, yeah. I, Jennifer, I am so very proud of you. And, you know, it, you. it hits a little different when you see the beginnings mm-hmm. and you see what people are now. And it was not by this hocus pocus. Yeah. I, I want you, you all to hear it because you see what, what it took. Mm-hmm. You yeah. know, I could tell my story, but y'all saw she just, you know, <laughs> but this is somebody younger than me. Got this yeah. list. Still had to work. Yeah. Yeah. Still putting in the, in the sweat and tears. Still and doing that. it. Still, still doing it. But in, still doing it, it. And, That's and, right. and understanding what the end game is, you know, what, what the end goal is, you know? Yeah. 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 So I appreciate you. And I thank you for always, always supporting me, Marley. And the family, Honey. like you are always that whenever I need something, I'm like, oh, I know, I know Marcy knows this. And every time we give you a call, you help, you're there to support. And so thank you for being a part of our journey. Uh, honey, yeah. I wouldn't have it any other way. Yeah. I would not have it any other way. Y'all know I love you dearly. Yes. I love you too. Yes, and yes, I need yes. to see you in class at 9 a.m. Oh, Lord, listen, listen now. I'm not going to sit up here. Listen, I got to get my mind right for you, Jeff. I'm... <laughs> I'm just, my, mom, my mom is on every weekend. I, I paid for her a, a monthly pass. Uh, and she's wait online a minute. every weekend. She, But she, she's going at her own pace. So go at your own pace. I'm just there to encourage you to challenge yourself. I'm not going to. I'm not going to kill you. Now, I'm, I'm going to challenge myself the most, of course, because I got, I'm the coach. I got to represent. <laughs> but I'm I, don't, like, I don't want you to oh, overdo it. Oh, have mercy. <laughs> Jennifer, I'm going to buck a damn one day. Lord, you you, you, you right, have fun. Right. We, you have fun. We do good music. We work out to the music because I believe, I, you know, a lot of hit, stop, hit workouts, they just do the reps in the songs and they don't really go to the beat. I'm a musical person. Mm-hmm. So I believe in working out to the beat. So the beat. we do our reps to the beat and it helps you kind of uh, work yourself and challenge yourself a little more. So the music is good. You know, we dance, we have fun, we work out. And it's a, it's a good it's a good group of ladies. We, so we it's, on sa- it's, it's, it's on Saturday, Jennifer. At 9 a.m. And if you can't make it in person, you can join online. Ooh, I'll no see you the link. <laughs> Listen. <laughs> I see you I'm to trying, I'm trying. I have, but I, it's been on the back of my mind. I was looking. My husband said, look at, look, uh-uh, mama, Jennifer gonna hurt. 
But let me tell you, Marley, she has her moments, but you know, that fitness is something that she is eventually going to be interested in. And I notice it now as she's getting a little older, she's working a little a bit harder. Before I had to be on her, like, you know, really put your effort into it. And now she's like really starting. I can see it coming together for her. Even though she doesn't fully enjoy it, I can see it coming together where she's like, I need this. Mm-hmm. You know, so it's, it, it's sometimes you just can't think about it. You just got to jump in. I don't feel okay, like working good. out all the time, but once I start <laughs> and after I finish, you feel like feel superwoman. Better. You feel like superwoman. I'm telling you. Okay, yeah, I hear she said you're going to feel like superwoman. I, I, listen, I'm going to have to test it out and see. I I'm to telling you. <laughs> I, if your mama can do it, I guess I can do it. Lord oh, yeah, mama. she's in there. She is in there. <laughs> yep, that's what I tell people. I'm like, uh-uh, my mama, we just said no excuses. My mama is there that, every You're Saturday. right, I just said no excuse, no excuse. <laughs> Lord have mercy, let me slap yeah. my own head. <laughs> <laughs> but Jennifer, so you have fun. Tell the audience how they can hook up to... Um, do the program uh-huh. or whatever else they need services they yeah. need from you yeah so if you go to my website the cold coach that's like hot and cold the cold coach.com you'll see all my services there all the health products detox products if you need to schedule a live coaching session um, i'm also hypnotherapy certified internationally certified if you need any type of hypnotherapy we can talk about um, there are waste bees there if you want to make custom when we make custom waste bees for you they're all there links to the workouts, everything is there on thecoldcoach.com. And that's also my social media handle. So on Instagram, it's the cold coach. Um, Facebook is the cold coach. Um, you can also connect with me on Instagram through inner fit. That's the new business that I'm starting, inner fit. Uh, and that we're going to, I'm probably going to be bridging everything under inner fit Together. eventually. But right now the cold coach is where you can find all of my stuff. Google me, Google me. Google, I'm, I'm that's Google. it, the cold coach. She's cold, cold y'all. Coach. <laughs> yes. And like I say every week, if you want to be a part of this um, discussion on the connecting point, all you got to do is look up Dr. Marcy's connections, Google it, or you can shoot me an email at um, drmarcysts at gmail.com. Or you can connect through the Connecting Point for Creators group on Facebook. Jennifer is a part of the group and many other creators because guess what? We are all creators. You create Mm -hmm. something, whether you believe it or not. And Mm -hmm. so if you want to get with like-minded people, we're winners. We are not negative talkers. Everything we put our hands to, we win. So um, if you think you want to be a part of something like that, um, where you can connect with others and get inspired and help promote other people, then join us. Look it up on Facebook, the Connecting Point for Creators group. Send us a Request to join, and we would love to have you. This show airs on Tuesdays on Instagram TV and YouTube. All I ask that you do is click, like, share, and subscribe. Click, like, share, and what? Subscribe. Subscribe. Yes. Help a sister (laughs) out. Help a a family of uh, a community out. We're a community of creators. The world needs to hear about what's going on here. So just Mm -hmm. do that. Click, like, share. And what? Subscribe. Subscribe. Thank you again, Jennifer. (laughs) Thank you so much. I love you, girl. I love you too. Thank you. Peace and blessings, everyone, till we meet again. Bye-bye. Bye.